Welcome to Mythtastic. In today's video, we'll be reviewing Marvel's Disney Plus show WandaVision in its entirety and give our take on it. We're a little bit late on reviewing the show, but this review will contain spoilers, so if you plan on watching it, you've been warned. Before we start, hit the subscribe button to see high-quality content about a variety of topics, and hit the bell icon to get notifications for when we post new videos. Also, leave a like if you enjoy the video. Before the show started to gain popularity, many people wouldn't have Wanda very high on their favorite MCU characters, and we can see why. Wanda hasn't really had a major impact on fans in the MCU movies, since there's not much to make viewers want to see more of her character. But WandaVision has turned many people, including us, into fans of the hero. The reason is because the show does a really good job of going in depth on the character. You get to see how Wanda is dealing with the death of Vision after the events of Endgame, and how it makes her go into a deep depression, which causes her to create the Hex. The scene of Wanda going to the actual West View, where her and Vision plan to live their lives, was a powerful scene of the show that is hooking to fans. Not only is she beginning to process the death of Vision after she was snapped back in Endgame, but hours earlier she learned that she isn't able to bury Vision's corpse, since he's not considered an actual person and is property of the government. You can tell she's holding back her emotions, and hasn't quite come to the terms of her loss. Once she opens up the map circled with the house they were going to build, she has an emotional breakdown which causes her to unconsciously create the Hex. It makes you feel sympathy for the character, and actually makes you want to care about Wanda. That's what WandaVision does well. It takes these two characters that most people didn't really care about and actually fleshes them out to where they're not two useless side characters in an Avengers movie filled with fan favorites. The show can actually take time to add substance to the characters, while the Avengers movies didn't have much room to do that. Their romance is actually something you start to care about once you get to see more of the two characters. It's not just Wanda's character building that makes the show worth watching. The plot of the show is also pretty good, with each episode slowly answering the audience's questions of what the Hex is, but also adding on more for you to figure out. The first two episodes were really neat for the show. Taking influence from popular old-fashioned sitcoms like The Dick Van Dyke Show, they transformed the first two episodes into literal sitcoms that you wouldn't even be able to tell if it was a Marvel show or not. But even though they work as standalone sitcoms, as a member of the audience you can tell something is off and it gives an unsettling tone. There are specific scenes out of each episode where something weird and unsettling happens to Wanda and Vision. It goes from an upbeat sitcom to moments of suspense and a bit of horror. These moments are really cool and well done. It creates brief moments that make audience members uncomfortable and then goes right back to the sitcom feeling like nothing happened. It's a bit disappointing because the use of the show being a sitcom with hidden horror in it is a cool idea, but instead, each episode after the third one just kind of throws aside the whole idea and just uses popular sitcoms of each decade as a structure to progress each episode. It's not a deal breaker, and the show is still entertaining to watch without going that route, but it would have been a cool thing to experiment with. As each episode goes on, the Hex has more weird things happening like learning that everyone's under a trance, or Wanda birthing her kids overnight and them growing up to have superpowers in a matter of days. But the most surprising occurrence in the Hex is when Wanda's dead brother Quicksilver comes back, but is Evan Peters Quicksilver from X-Men? This would be a cool reveal if it led to anything at all, but instead the character was there to just make jokes and make fun of everyone and wasn't really important at all. Many fans were frustrated that the Evan Peters appearance didn't lead to the teasing of the X-Men, and it's pretty reasonable to get mad at since Marvel knew this would make many fans expect an introduction to mutants. WandaVision couldn't have anything major happen or else people who just watched the movies would be confused, but it would honestly be better if the inclusion of Evan Peters wasn't included at all. The show isn't just about Wanda and Vision's mysterious life in the Hex, as it shows a perspective of the Hex from people in the real world. It's from the eyes of sword agent Monica Rambeau who was stuck in the Hex and came back out, along with sword director Tyler Hayward, FBI agent Jimmy Woo, and Darcy Lewis from the Thor movies. These characters are a good inclusion since it explains to the viewers what's happening in the Hex and what it is, although they also don't have much room to speculate on what the Hex is 
and what's going on in there. Hayward is a corrupt government-like official who strives to create another vision out of the original's body, so he can better his organization and never have them struggle like they did when Thanos snapped away half the universe. It's a decent motivation for trying to stop Wanda since he tells everyone that Wanda stole Vision's body, but it's later revealed that he had Vision's body the whole time and created his own version of the android. So not only does he not have any logical motivation to attack Wanda, but there's no reason for him to be an antagonist in the show at all. Hayward isn't the only villain, though, as it's revealed at the end of Episode 7 that Agatha, who was Wanda's friendly and nosy neighbor, was behind everything all along. Except that the only thing she was behind was tricking Wanda into believing that her brother was still alive. And Wanda is the only one who created the Hex and is keeping people there against their will. So, neither of these antagonists' major reveals or motivations are essential to the plot. Agatha still works as an antagonist, though, since her goals are to see if Wanda is the Scarlet Witch and eventually absorb her powers. She just doesn't work as a pulling all the strings type of villain. The ending fights of the show were pretty cool. Wanda learns that she's the Scarlet Witch from Agatha and has a fight with her, as well as the Vision in the Hex fighting Howard's Vision that he created. Both of the fights end with the winner of the fight outsmarting their opponent. Wanda uses a spell Agatha put on Wanda earlier, and Vision uses philosophy of identity to defeat White Vision. This was cool to see since they are unique ways to conclude their fights rather than just a who is more powerful type of deal. Sword also shows up to try and take out Wanda, but is pretty minuscule in the climax of the series. The scene where Hayward tries to gun down Wanda's children was really dumb, since he has no reason to even try to harm Wanda, let alone her two kids, and just seemed unnecessarily evil. The ending of the series was different from the typical Marvel ending since Wanda doesn't really win. She has to get rid of the Hex, which will have Vision and her children cease to exist. Although Vision and her children will return in some form, which was teased in the ending credits, the series finale was pretty good. Not every Marvel ending has to be happy, and Wanda finally starts to be able to normally grieve after she gets rid of the Hex. Her becoming the Scarlet Witch also has potential for more character development, since she'll have to learn what her new powers are, and since her power is from dark magic, it can lead to possible conflict. Many fans were upset that the show didn't introduce the X-Men, Mephisto, or even the Fantastic Four, but it wouldn't make sense for a Disney Plus series to reveal major superheroes or villain appearances. WandaVision overall was a pretty good show, with a few flaws that make the show short of being great. The show has some uniqueness to it, and shows promise for future Marvel Disney Plus shows. We give WandaVision an 8 out of 10. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to our channel and click the bell to get notifications every time we upload a video. If you have any video ideas you would like to see, leave them in the comments below, and your idea might be our next video.